when it all goes down. Hi there. How are y'all doing tonight? Okay, so tonight um, we are going to have Tess Fraud Wolf. Um, Tess is a certified art therapist, hypnotherapist, um, and psychotherapist with her master's in social work. She speaks on issues of male-female relationships and pornography. Also jo joining us will be the poet Distinguish, um, 21 years old, um, in the second year uh, at John Jay College, and is a part of a poetry ensemble called Unfamed Talent, um, and uh, he's got business cards. So please join us in welcoming Tess and Distinguish. My name is Henry, I go by Distinguish. Um, I'm studying law at John Jay College, my second year, minor in psychology. Um, and I have business cards. Um, I'm ready to network, I'm ready to do a lot of good things. Um, and yeah. So it's Women is uh, History Month, so I'm gonna do a poem about a girl that I once loved. I'm sure everybody in here can relate to that. You lied, I said you lied, you lied, oh you lied, you lied. She used to be my buddy, she took my heart and then she broke it. I used to say I love you but she never spoke it. And it hurts because everything I said I really meant it. Now I just feel like another poet with no standards. I used to cry a lot. She gave me so much tears, I could have owned the beach. Now I just fight to give myself some peace without a guy who's cold or a cookbook recipe. We used to talk a lot listening to the birds chirp, walking through the parks holding hands. We were so sure that we'd last. But you know life lasts when it comes to making decisions because yours come last. We used to cuddle in my bed, we used to snuggle. I used to kiss her on the forehead and lick the bubble. We were wrecked together, then I started sensing trouble. All of a sudden we came all of a sudden life. Buddy, buddy, where you at, girl? Buddy, buddy, you know I need you. Buddy, buddy, I really miss you. Buddy, you know it's getting hard to breathe too. Buddy, you don't know what I've been through. Buddy, life needs to be so simple. Buddy, you even at my issue. Oh, what I wouldn't do. Movies were the greatest, we never went to watch it. So we'd be making out moves and people saying stop it. I remember calling all the father picking up the phone telling me you cannot come to it. You're too busy working home. See, when we got introduced, my daddy didn't like me. But actually, on the real, my daddy wanted to fight me. All I was trying to do was just do the right things like Lee never showed up and I didn't take that lightning two years deeper than a sinker in the ocean sea. So when it hit the floor, her love hit me. Her neck carriers, no strange barriers. Her garden of Eden had one scavenger. After a while, the group started to swell up, and her head started to get gassed up. We ended fast like a flash from a camera. It's hard to breathe now without that I have to ask, buddy, buddy, where you at, girl? Buddy, buddy, you know I need you. Buddy, buddy, I really miss you. Buddy, it's getting hard to breathe, too. Buddy, you don't know what I've been through. Buddy, life used to be so simple. Buddy, you leaving is my issue. Oh, what I wouldn't get. We used to eat chips a lot, now we throw fists a lot. That's what I used to say when we were, but now we're not. We used to twist a lot, argue in parking lots, make love until I hurt bad like Michael's pops. Have you ever went shopping until you really fell? Looked into the eyes of a girl who wasn't real? So in front of her, looking through that penny in a well. Well, a well? Have you ever loved someone so much till it made you cry at night you couldn't sleep and you thought you'd die without the bite side to sing a lullaby? Oh, why? Is this somebody's fault, or did destiny just turn another course? French toast and got the butter cornflakes and got the frost, but I'm lost. Because she should have stuck it out. She should have been there, especially when it counts. Instead, she did the opposite. She got up and bounced over. He said, she said, what we're about. But how did she let those critics get close to her ear? The infection took her over. She's no longer here for me. What happened to my buddy? The girl I used to love and who I thought loved me. Still, to this day, I don't know why she left. Because a love like ours could have killed death. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Can you hear me okay? It's not. 
Can you hear me okay without it? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, so I think it's okay. Is it okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to read about, first I'm going to talk about capitalism a little bit. Then I'm going to talk about pornography. Then I'm going to talk about their interrelationship and what I see as the effect on human relationships and the current loneliness within the human relationships. Some of this research is going to be my own, which I talked about. Some is more statistics. And um, any questions that you might have or comments, I would love if you want to write it down. You know, everybody has a smartphone now, or just keep it in your head and ask me afterward. I would really love that. Or if there's anything that needs clarification. Thank you all again very much for coming. Okay. Capitalism, our economic system, emphasizes the significance within obtaining and possessing things. The making of profit is seen as paramountly important. Acquiring wealth and all manners of goods is seen as critical in order to maintain a positive and meaningful existence. Capitalism also encourages and values individualism and competition. These tenets of capitalism have helped to instill in the American public a manner of evaluating everything from objects and developments to people and relationships as things from which to obtain happiness, fulfillment, and much necessary senses of meaning. People have come to regard one another as suppliers of goods and services. This has dramatically impacted relationships for a long time. Capitalism has found an eager ally in the pornography business. Although pornography has been around for centuries and has been traded over the internet since the 80s, it was the invention of the World Wide Web in 1991, as well as the opening of the internet to the general public at about the same time that led to an explosion in online pornography. Every second, $3,075.64 is spent on pornography. Every second, 28,258 internet users are viewing pornography. In that same second, 372 internet users are typing adult search terms into search engines. The pornography industry has larger revenues than Microsoft, Google, Amazon, eBay, Yahoo, Apple, and Netflix all combined together. What? Porn revenue is also larger than all combined revenues of football, baseball, and basketball franchises together. In 2006 alone, the worldwide pornography revenues ballooned to $97.06 billion. Every 39 seconds, a new pornographic video is being made. There are 1.5 billion pornographic internet downloads every month. Between the years 2005 and 2006 alone, the pornography business increased by almost $1 billion. Companies everywhere are investing in pornography and pornographic companies and productions because of the incredible growth. This includes many major companies that one would not immediately think of. Recently, I don't know if this is common knowledge, but Newt Gingrich, named as Entrepreneur of the Year, due to the vast capital and accumulated and the growth, a company called Pink Visual, which apparently he didn't sort of smell the seduction in the title, but uh, it's a pornographic DVD company. And then it was later mocked as a giant failure because he stands for many things that oppose it. But I think it's a good illustration of the popularity and the enormous profit making of these companies. They're now included in the other giant establishments that churn out this amount of revenue. Pornography is 50% more popular than any music site on or eBay, and four times as popular as travel services, such as hotel or airline reservations. Pornography is now the most popular internet destination for American men between 18 and 34 years old. 40 million adults in the United States regularly visit pornography sites. Of these 40 million, 10% or 4 million admit to having a sexual addiction to pornography. Of the 4 million adults who admit to having the sexual addiction problem, 680,000 are women. 17% of this 680,000 of women say they struggle with pornography addiction specifically. This is the same number of women who are addicted to alcohol or drugs. 
In this country, the average age that a boy looks at porn is 11 and a half years old. By 13 years old, 75% of American children have seen online porn more than once. The statistics about the children's viewing or usage, since one quickly leads to the other, reveal the exposure to pornography that the vast majority of American children are enduring. This exposure facilitates the development of profoundly distressing standards about sex, sexuality, gender, gender roles, and body image. In terms of body image, the most popular things within my own private research and what I've studied first has to do with, uh, for women with a breast size and appearance. Increasingly, both women and men, or boys and girls, forget what breasts look like because the general thing in porn is, is to have breast implants. There are more often than not. Even though there are, there are the dominant vision. And so many women are more interested in getting implants earlier. And many men, including one man with whom I did an interview, described the first time he saw real breasts as, quote, scary, unquote. And that they hung, I mean, that he gave some really interesting physical descriptions. But that they hung differently and that he felt a little bit freaked out and put off and that he found her, in his words, decidedly unattractive. That he had come to associate with sexiness the very round, sort of anti-gravity qualities of a breast implant. Also gaining in popularity are women as young as 11 and obviously much older, growing extremely critical about the appearance of their genitals more requests from teenagers and many more from adults for labiaplasty. Some of the vaginal cosmetic surgeries that porno uh, pornographic actors, the female porn stars, are getting, which the numbers are growing, in terms of having aesthetics for how a vagina should look and for what isn't, isn't a more and less attractive vagina. Penis size has also come up with many men who I interviewed and who I read about discussing the feelings of inadequacy they have compared to the men in porn. Because the men in porn tend to be well endowed and also hypermuscular and sort of brutish, several men have discussed feeling inadequate and insufficient in comparison. Even several of the men who said that they used to feel satisfied with their penis size or their muscularity said that they had grown doubtful after watching them. There are also many instances in which pornography emerges when internet users are looking for other things entirely. I recently, this is my own example, but I recently liked uh, Lainey Lane as a singer. I didn't think anything of that name particularly, but she's a singer and I liked her song, so I downloaded a song. And it wasn't her song, it was actually a quick video, a three minute video, the average length of a song, that was called um, How to Rape Your Babysitter. And I was very disturbed, since this was not what I was looking for. And it sort of came to me that if this happened to me in such a completely accidental way, I could extrapolate from that this, the frequency with which this must be happening to adults and children. Another example, I looked, a friend of mine who I call Bean, I looked for her for a picture of a bean, and I wrote green beans. And I was arrested with literally hundreds of images of all sorts of really graphic sexual acts. There's obviously no relevance to green beans in them. There were no beans, there were no vegetables. So again, it reiterated the point that you don't have to look. You don't even have to be interested. You're gonna get served that. And if you have the slightest inkling of interest, which I'm pretty sure we all do about sex, since that's why we're here, that it could start something quite easily. And if, if nothing else, it, it does provide you with an image and a lasting memory, at least in my case. If we imagine that this happens to millions of children and adults, we begin to see the extent to which pornography is being hurled into our daily experiences, visual fields, and memories. Pornography tends, with exceptions, to objectify and degrade women, and this is a particular problem in heterosexual pornography. The issues of objectification, and particularly the objectification of women, is not new. Yet the degrees of this objectification continue to grow more extreme. Recent trends in porn have demonstrated a growing number of porn sites that openly declare war on the female body. They equally as blatantly 
mock and reject tenderness as an enemy of masculinity. These sites, and they are gaining in number and in popularity, conflate sexiness and sexual behavior with emotionless, often anonymous, and sometimes violent sexual exchanges. Amidst the violent behavior are many scenes in which crimes, serious crimes, are turned into fodder for masturbation. Child porn is frequently toyed with in heterosexual porn. As women, as women in porn are often dressed as little girls. Images dominate the most mainstream of movies, the most often rented, in which hundreds of female porn stars are dressed in school go gear. Childlike pigtails, <coughs> sucking of lollipops, and titles suggesting the seduction and rape of children or adolescents abound in the most mainstream of porn. Female porn performers are often required and written in to the strip, requests to act stunned and frightened within the porn films as they are sexually accosted by lone men or groups of men. The amount of rape within porn, the sheer amount of titles of porn films with the word rape in them are startling. The serious international problem of gang rape has also been seized upon by the porn industry as a high selling theme. This has given away to a recent explosion in the popularity of gangbang films, in which many men penetrate one or few women. Also climbing in popularity in recent years are sexual acts in which women are on the receiving end of acts that appear increasingly gratuitously humiliating, such as, so there's a list, Bukake, which is the coming on a woman's face, often by many men at the same time. Very popular and very recently are scenes in which many men ejaculate into one cup or container and the woman is forced to drink it. This seems almost completely unsexual to me <laughs> <laughs> and composes therefore an example of gratuitous humiliation. Where is the sexuality in a bunch of men coming into one cup and then separately, a woman who looks like she'd rather not, but is trying to look enthusiastic, drinking it. There's not even any bodily exchange. In some of the interviews that I will discuss in more detail later that I did for this particular talk, several men stated that I interviewed them, that it was amazing to watch, quote, such a gorgeous girl having to do something so gross, unquote. Ching Sun's documentary, The Price of Pleasure, the chapter in Chris Hedge's book, Empire of the Illusion, and Gail Dine's book, Pornland, back this up. Many men have discussed the way in which they have felt vindicated by watching the same luscious looking women dangled in front of their faces by advertisers, having to drink cum or otherwise humiliate themselves. Several very famous and enormously wealthy pornographers have recently come out and quote in quotes have said that they are getting even with whole hosts of men for whom they feel compassion out there. That they are getting even for all the women that the men couldn't sexually or romantically gain access to in high school. That it is some kind of vengeful process. This has been very openly discussed by some really prominent pornographers. <coughs> Another development that I find gratuitously humiliating is uh, ATM or ass to mouth. And this is also very popular as of recent years. In case ever everybody's not familiar, this is when a man will have anal sex with a woman and then immediately put his penis into her mouth. And so there's this potentially poisonous, actually, that's what I'm going to talk about next, but also infecting process that's going on. And a lot of the allure which I was told explicitly from several fans of ATM porn, is watching the woman kind of have to do this, because it seems unthinkable and inherently distasteful for many. Sam Benjamin is a former pornographer who has done clips on his previous life in which he was a big fan of, participant in, and cameraman for pornography and production. When I saw his clip, 
he presented a series of audio shots, and um, several of them engaged ass to mouth, and several of them also entailed women gagging or vomiting afterwards, the men discussing that this was happening since it was interfering with the shoot. And also what was happening, which I found really noteworthy, were that several cameramen and male porn stars were laughing at the women who were vomiting and or gagging. I found this to be not only disturbing, but also an example of how it possibly the messages within the porn could be infecting the actors, the dynamic between the men and women, where the women getting sick and being comrades, they're all actors, porn actors, is somehow being disrespected. Another development that's gained in popularity enormously is that of multiple penetration within porn films. These films entail women being orally, anally, and vaginally penetrated by several partners simultaneously. Women who work in such films have discussed injuries resulting from multiple penetration, including torn rectums, perforated uteruses, split facial and vaginal lips, and many more serious injuries as results of such films. The last development I will discuss is, sorry for the graphic description, is either called gagging or face fucking. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. So if anybody's curious, you can let me know after the talk. <laughs> anyway, um, according to many fans of gagging and films that focus on gagging, the gag noise that women make before sort of the vomit reflex is a go-to moment within the foreign films. That the men, have, several men told me that they fast forward to the moments in which the gag noise is heard. Increasing numbers of films are being produced in which women tear up, have running noses because the, the breathing becomes constricted, and sometimes vomit does appear. Within my personal interviews and research for this talk, 70% of the women I interviewed reported feeling expected to enjoy or tolerate being gagged in this way when performing oral sex on men or boyfriends at at least one point in their lives. <coughs> Interestingly, 40% of the men that I interviewed reported experiencing women asking them to engage in face fucking at some point. Several men stated that they could not understand how this was enjoyable to the women, but the women insisted. These developments may appear extreme, but they have become somewhat commonplace in the world of pornography. They are often joked about. There are funny little names for them. After I saw a film in which a woman's mouth was being pulled from the side and there was some, a blood, there was some blood and the side of her lip began to crack, I was really upset about it. And I was at a bar with friends. I started talking about it. I was pretty excited. And there was a group of men I was speaking to, and they were all surprised at my surprise. They asked me to enlighten my experience, and I did. And they all sort of jokingly said, like, oh, that's the fish hook. You're talking about the fish hook. And I found the nonchalance really disturbing. I found that to be like, I was the last one learning about this. And it was funny, and there was this name for it, and everybody got it. And so that really reiterated the frequency with which this is becoming accepted as normal, or at least jokeable in a bar setting with strangers. Above all, these examples are what millions are watching, many of whom are children with natural curiosities about sex. Internet porn has become the place to which more and more children and teenagers turn for sexual education, particularly in the instances in which it is lacking in their schools, districts, or homes. This is where and how standards for gender roles, sexuality, and what is and is not sexy have been developing. Frighteningly young kids now possess distressing A recent example in Canada, a group of babysitters between 15 and 17 were charged with uh, really brutally molesting some of their babysitting charges. Because they were minors, they were not instantaneously arrested or otherwise charged. The police and the, you know, the authorities had to do more work in trying to figure out what was going on because of their lesser age. When they did the work, 
it was found that they were directly reproducing acts from brutal and violent porn films on their babysitting charges. Another example is recent from Rochester, New York, in which a 15-year-old girl was found molesting her, the little seven-year-old boy she was babysitting, and filming herself masturbating in front of him. I chose both of these examples because they both seem really directly related to porn. The second one with the Rochester young girl, she's making her own pornography essentially, I and mean, she's filming it. And the first one was found that they were directly related to the brutal or violent porn that the teenagers were witnessing. I do believe that these are really visceral, troubling, and important images that depict what can happen when people get exposed to such things. I have taken some sample titles from advertisements of porn sites and the websites themselves to illustrate the violence within much of current porn. This is an example of introductory text on the site for onlybestsex.com. Do you know what we say to things like romance and foreplay? We say fuck off. This is not another site with half erect weenies trying to impress bold sluts. We take, we take gorgeous young bitches and do what every man would really like to do. We make them gag till their makeup starts running. They get all their holes sore, vaginal, age, anal, double penetration. Anything brutal involve a cock and an orifice, unquote. This statement speaks volumes. It says, quote, anything brutal, unquote. It demonstrates the equating of brutality with sexiness and desire. It demeans the intimacy and mutuality of foreplay. It sounds to me like hatred. In Gail Dine's book, Pornland, she offers another example. This from gagfactor.com. On the site read, quote, join us now to access complete degradation, unquote. On the site, hundreds of women are being aggressively orally penetrated. Many are gagging, almost all are crying, and all but two of the women have their faces covered in semen. Mascara is streaking down their necks and faces. Their hair is being pulled roughly. Throats are held in vice-like grips. And in several extremely upsetting examples, the women's nostrils are held so that they cannot breathe. Mouths that are swollen, distended and bleeding, are held apart and forced to perform fellatio. Several of the male porn performers during the shoots often call the women stupid, sluts, worthless whores, bitches, cunts, and dumpsters. Sometimes they threaten with violence and death while the sex is happening. Max Hardcore, a well-known brutal porn star, is notorious for calling women fucking losers and pieces of shit while he has sex with them. Lastly, and I promise it will get somewhat easier to hear after this part, I wanted to run down a list of porn titles and sites that promise the violence I'm addressing. Some also reveal the towing of the line regarding child pornography that I have recognized. A few titles. Anally ripped whores, anal suffering, teen dirty slut, petite teen hard fuck, banged babysitters, gag the babysitter, and come swapping bitches. Additionally, one excerpt read, quote, the last thing we needed here was a vomiting girl, but this time was close. Stopping is not our style, so she was grabbed by the head and face fucked as if there was no tomorrow. She tried hard to swallow, but there was too much muck, and the bitch had no real choice but to take it all. And of course, her love tunnel looked like a, a train had passed through. Unquote. These titles, sites, and excerpts illustrate the degree of violence that is being extolled in some situations as normal the names for the women, the sexual acts, and the ways in which male actors sometimes relate to female actors all portray the savaging of one party by the other. They portray it as acceptable sexual behavior. Many of these sites openly seek to wound and humiliate in ways that show viewers one of the worst sides of humanity. The dynamic of empowered and powerless is flagrantly demonstrated in these and many other mainstream porn films and have resulted in the perpetuation of profoundly damaging stereotypes about men, women, sexuality, and relationships. Furthermore, in the vast majority of these and other porn films, the men have faces of stone while performing these sexual acts. 
They say very few things often, and those often with extreme disdain. They sexually engage with the women as if wholly disconnected with anything other than drilling and mechanistic acts. It is as if theirs is a grim but necessary duty. Is this how we want sex to look? Of course, there is porn available in which such violence is lesser in degree or absent. However, the sheer amount of sites, similar to those that I have described, is troubling and significant. It is also on the rise. The images of women as receptacles and men as aggressors dominate the screens. Studies have shown that regular heterosexual male viewers of porn have more violent and negative attitudes towards women after they watch the porn. Studies have also supported that porn warps overall expectations. The way that these images seep into the notions of sexuality and acceptable sexual behavior can also be seen in popular culture and current relationship statistics and trends. Within my own research for the talk that I touched on previously, I interviewed 30 men and 44, I'm sorry, 30 men and 44 women of varying ages, races, and socioeconomic backgrounds. A full 81% of those interviewed had experienced pornography impacting their sexual and intimate lives. And 74% described specific situations in which acts from pornography were intruding on their own sexual desires. Most common of all were complaints from women that their male partners expected them to engage in anal sex. Some women stated that they did not want to have it at all, but that male, certain male partners had expected it as a given. Other women complained of partners ignoring their requests for foreplay before and during the anal sex in order to reduce pain and increase pleasure. Two, instance invo two instances involved boyfriends or partners complaining of preparations for anal sex, quote, ruining the mood, unquote. Lastly, several men that I interviewed stated that they were freaked out and more than a little put off when women partners requested harder and harder anal sex. These men stated that they felt that they were hurting the women but were confused by the woman's persistence and decided to go with it, although they reported to having an uneasy, bad feeling afterward. I've heard from many men that it has confused them when female partners with paper. have asked to be slapped, choked, or have the men come on their faces. Some men stated that they have wanted to please women have been interested in kink and sexual playing around, but felt guilty about it, and it stayed with them in a way that was not positive. Other men have told me that some women sexual partners se seem to think that it turns men on if they act like insatiable porn stars. The confusion of these men with whom I've spoken, who describe female partners' performance-style sex complete with what they feel is forced narrating of acts that are happening, which is often seen in porn films. But the men felt that it was contrived and put on in a way that they found unsexy and puzzling. This leads me to believe that a solid and growing number of young women think men find them more attractive if they show a willingness to be objectified, degraded, and possibly roughed up or hurt in the process of sex. Women who perceive that male partners expect or hope for porn-like experiences and obliged to those expectations are more likely to be making the male pleasure the priority rather than their own or mutual pleasure. These women thus fall prey to an age-old sorrowful trend of losing themselves in the striving for male approval. 60% of the men that I interviewed discussed feeling more self-conscious about penis size and overall body as a likely, likely outcome of watching pornography. It just il illustrates the way in which the self-esteem of men and the body image of men is, is also impacted. Thank you. Men are also experiencing increasing difficulty performing sexually on a national level, from maintaining erections, to focusing on partners during sex, to having orgasms at all. 
As John Mayer, an avid fan of pornography, told Playboy in an interview a few years back, how could you be constantly synthesizing an orgasm based on dozens of shots? You're looking for the one photo out of a thousand you swear is going to be the one you finish to, and you still don't finish. How does that not affect the psychology of having a relationship with somebody? It has to. I chose the Mayer quote because he is a fan, so he's not coming at it from a critical standpoint at all, and he watches it regularly and continues to, but he will admit and discuss the way in which it has impacted his own sexual performance and his own sexual preference. Mayer describes the emergence of SADD, or Sexual Attention Deficit Disorder. That's what it's called, or SAD, which is also the Many men have grown so accustomed to the breakneck pace with which porn offers thousands of images that they can no longer maintain arousal or focus during the comparatively slow process of actual sex. Additionally, many viewers have unconsciously begun to associate anonymity with arousal, resulting in a failure to either engage in or appreciate the intimacy that accompanies real sex. Even very one-night stand oriented real sex is a countlessly more intimate experience than sitting with a computer screen. It's just, it's, there's really no comparison whatsoever. Men in record numbers are also confessing to being unable to complete sexual acts that involve another live human being. A recent University of Kansas study found that 25% of college-aged men said they'd faked orgasms in the last six months. This used to be a problem that was just discussed for women for many, many years, the faking of orgasms was seen as a specifically female problem. The fact that 25% of college-aged men are saying that it's happened to them, from that I extrapolate a lot of them are not going to say it, and it is happening to them. And so we really have to look at this as a really important and relatively recent development. This is what an increasing and alarming number of men and women are complaining about. It began to get press when numbers of women began complaining in blogs, magazines, there were newspapers, articles about it, about feeling perpetually sexually rejected, unwanted, unattractive, when their male partners would show disinterest in having sex with them. Yet it is now more and more frequently addressed by men who have become truly troubled by their sexual performance incapacity. Because of the intense profitability of pornography that I discussed earlier, pornographers have multiplied alongside of viewers, with each pornographer striving to outdo one another by having more outrageous porn. This has often translated into having more violent porn. You want to get the sight visit, you want to get the shock. And having more and more violent porn, more and more degrading porn, and or porn with more and younger and younger looking women seems to be a quick way to get that kind of sight hit. The mini-documentary Porndemic and Ching Sun's documentary Price of Pleasure Again helped to chronicle this development. Pornography is now everywhere. It has truly saturated the culture. It's in the pole dancing classes that have become common that are at gyms everywhere. There are also striptease classes. It's in the choice of underwear that the vast majority of women choose to wear. Thongs were only used by sex workers in the past, or maybe by some kind of saucy evening, but it is now the commonplace, most frequent choice. Brazilian waxes have become the most common request at waxing and beauty spots. This was also for sex workers who didn't want to show pubic hair when they would dance either naked or close to being naked. Stripper shoes and hypersexualized outfits have grown in popularity with women increasingly young. Additionally, porn stars are regarded as movie stars, show up in music videos, award ceremonies, and are often lauded as beauty icons in a different manner than they were previously. Capitalism values profit above all. Since such tunnel vision has no concern for equal rights, morality, or resulting detriment to personal relationships. How does this mainstreaming of porn and the consequent increasing numbers of viewers and addicts affect relationships? The statistics on singleness 
are up for women and men. There are more single men and more single women than ever before in America. The divorce rate has climbed. The divorce rate for the second divorce has climbed. Recent statistics report that there are now more single than married women in the United States for the first time in history. And United States women are less likely than ever to have a husband. Women are also now living without spouses, with and without children in record numbers. <coughs> Additionally, people within relationships are reporting greater and greater rates of loneliness. A very high percentage of people in recent studies, several recent studies, report that they have no one they feel they can talk to. So these are descriptions of a skyrocketing rate of personal loneliness and a failure to feel that you're engaging regularly with any one person. This includes friends. Rising amounts of men and women are turning away from, count from countless opportunities for real and actual sex and intimacy in favor of sitting alone in front of computers. The computers that often contain polarizing and ultimately divisive messages about gender, relationships, and sexuality are a safer and cheaper bet for many. The people who choose to watch pornography over engaging in an interaction with a real person, sexual or romantic or otherwise, are in essence selecting solitary experiences over mutual ones. Bless you. Even regarding sexual acts that are by their very nature and description about merging, instead of having actual sex and engaging in real relationships, troubling and growing numbers of adults are becoming distant from themselves and one another. The consumption of pornography has become a substitution for real experience and true intimacy. In a similar manner to the way in which fast food has become a rapid, substanceless stand-in for an actual, nourishing, enjoyable meal, so has pornography become a replacement for authentic sexual encounters and relationships. I would like to thank my parents for influencing my interest in and desire to share this material. I would also like to thank Renata Broderick and Kate Goff for helping me edit and dealing with me talking about it last minute nervousness. Thank you very much.